Hello! A couple of years ago I produced a video on here about how to produce an interactive quiz in Microsoft PowerPoint and that's proved quite popular. But I've noticed that a lot of people have been asking recently both in, on my channel and in the uh, Google product forums whether it's possible to do the same thing in Google Slides. Now there are two problems that are making this very difficult for people. Uh, one is the fact that there is no option uh, to have a link which goes to the last slide viewed. And if you look at the video that I did in June 2015, you'll see that that is an integral part of how to produce that quiz. Um, that's one of the problems that we've got to tackle. The other is the fact that uh, Google Slides has no ability to prevent you clicking to go to the next slide. And of course an interactive quiz has got to restrict you to only being able to click on buttons. So those are the two problems which uh, have caused issues. And in this video I'm going to show you how to overcome both problems to produce a non-linear interactive presentation with questions that people can click on the answers to, they'll be told whether they're correct or not, they'll be able to proceed to the next question or go back to the last one, and they won't be able to click anywhere on the screen except on the buttons. Clicking anywhere on the screen will not take them automatically to the next slide. So if I was to prevent, uh, present this quiz to you, You'll see here, is this the first question? Uh, and if I click anywhere on the screen, I'm clicking all around the screen there, it is not proceeding to the next slide. Uh, if I click the wrong answer, so if I click no, it's not the first question, uh, then I'm told wrong. Again, clicking anywhere on the screen does nothing at all. I have to click the back button. That takes me back to the question. I can then answer the <clears throat> excuse me, question correctly, clicking yes. Yes, I'm correct. I can now click on the next button to go to question two. And again, wherever I click, it doesn't uh, take me forwards. I have to use these two buttons. So is this the third question? Uh, yes, it is. I'm wrong. Click back. Is it the third question? Oh, it must be no. That's right. I'm correct. And so forth. So that's how it works. I'll show you exactly how to do that in this video. So stick with me and let's see if we can get this working. So let's see how we can solve these two problems. Uh, first of all, let's tackle the problem of not having the option to include a link to the last slide viewed. Now what we did in PowerPoint, and what's normally done, is to have a question slide, then have a correct and wrong slide, and then have another question slide, but then keep using or reusing the correct and wrong slide. So correct simply has a link on it to go to the next slide. Wrong has a link on it that goes back to whatever the last slide viewed was. So whatever question, whatever slide the user was on, when they jumped to the wrong page, they click on this button, it goes back to that slide, which might be 20 slides earlier. It may not be the previous slide. So that's one of the problems we've got. Now the solution to this is fairly straightforward. It does just mean a little more fiddle um, and a bigger presentation. So basically what I've got here, ignoring the title slide, which is slide one. On slide two, I have my question, obviously. Um, and I have my options. You don't just have to have yes or no. You could have as many options as you like, of course. Um, you could have more than one correct, more than one wrong, up, up to you. But what I've done is to take the yes button here and link it to the correct slide which comes after it. So you'll see here, by the way, if you want to um, know how to insert a link, uh, there's something, click on your shape. There are no action buttons as there are in PowerPoint. So somebody click on your shape. In the toolbar, you have this little um, chain symbol, this little link. Simply click on that. Um, it doesn't open a pop-up, it's easily missed, but you have this little drop-down list under here. And if I remove that link, you'll see that I have the two options. Either one, I can paste in an external website, external URL, 
or what I can do is click this option here that says slides in this presentation and here we have the next previous first last and as I say we don't have that one in PowerPoint we have uh, go to previous sli last slide viewed um, but what I'm going to do is link it to the correct slide number three slide three um, and my no um, option here is linked to slide four which is wrong well it's right but it's the wrong slide if you see what I mean um, the next slide question two again has these two buttons but the yes slide is linked not to the same correct slide but a copy of it which comes afterwards um, and again my no slide or whichever around it is the wrong slide clicks to the wrong uh, slide that comes after it. So basically we've got a set of three slides. Question, correct, wrong. Question, correct, wrong. Carrying on. Question, correct, wrong. So every time you want to add a question you will have to select both the question, the correct and the wrong slide templates that you've used, copy them and paste them all over again so that you then will have to edit the buttons to link to the new copy of your correct button, the new copy of your wrong button. Um, similarly, the correct slide here, the link on this next button, links to whatever the next question is. So I obviously have to create the next question slide before I can add that link in. And if I click on the wrong slide template there, the back button goes back to whatever the question was. So in this case, the back button is linking back to slide two. So we're on slide four, it's linking back to slide two, which is where the question is. So in total, you've got three slides and you've got four links. The two links from the yes and no, the one on the correct, which goes on to the next question, and the one on the wrong, which goes back to the previous question. Um, I hope that's reasonably clear. Um, if you have any questions or that didn't make sense, uh, please do uh, leave a question below and I will do my best to help you. So that's that side of the problem. But the bigger problem, and I know that I've seen a lot of people posting this question on um, the Google forums, is how on earth in Google Slides can you prevent the user from being able to click anywhere on the slide, I'm clicking all over the, the slide here, um, they say how can you prevent them from, from being able to click on a slide and proceed to the next slide? Uh, how can you restrict them so they have to click on the buttons? And a lot of people are just saying doesn't exist, you can't do that, um, suggest it to Google and they will ignore it at their pleasure. Um, in a way, they're right, there is no inbuilt way of doing that, but there is a fairly easy cheat. And I'll show you uh, what I've done here. Let me just zoom out a little bit here uh, so you can see this. What I've got, uh, let, let's, um, let's go to this template here, this um, first slide here. Fairly simple. I've got my title, subtitle, I've got a button here, that's it. So how is this button able to link to the next slide, but clicking on the rest of it doesn't? Well, because there isn't actually just the one button on here. There are two buttons on here. That there is the second button. It is a rectangle, which I've drawn. Um, let me color it something different so that you can see. Let's color it in blue. So this is, let me zoom back in again to 100%, uh, this is a rectangle and what I've done is I have linked this rectangle to this slide. So this is slide one and this rectangle is linking to slide one. So it's linking to this same slide, so it doesn't do anything basically. Now what I've done is to then make this shape, make this button, the same size as the whole slide. So that wherever I click on this slide, I am effectively clicking on this button that links to this slide. Now what you'll notice is that my ordering, the layering if you like, is set up so that the buttons I want to work are on top of or in front of this button here and everything else is behind it. So as long as my buttons 
are in front of this button, they will work. But as long as this big blue button here is in front of everything else, then clicking on the slide will do nothing. Now, of course, what I have to do is make sure that with this uh, large button selected, I go to the fill button and I select transparent so we can see through it. So that really, in a nutshell, is how to do it. Uh, for each of these um, slides, what I've got, if I click anywhere on the slide, again, you can see I have a large button linked to this uh, same slide and with these buttons that I'm allowed to click in front of it. Now, the one thing that I would say here, the one, one tip I would give, um, is that obviously um, what I'm wanting to do, if I just go to transparent again, when I copy this slide, I will want to be able to edit this question, and I'll want to be able to edit this question number, and I'll want to edit what's on these buttons. Now, it's easy for me to edit um, the buttons because they are in, uh, in front of the large button. So that's easy enough because I can't click on uh, this bit here because this large button, this uh, temporarily blue button, is in front of that text box. Now you could just simply drag this off to the side, click in there and edit your um, question. However, what I prefer to do is to use the keyboard shortcut. And if you are making a quiz like this, I highly recommend that you remember this keyboard shortcut. The keyboard shortcut for bringing something to the front is Control, Shift and the Up button. So with this blue button here selected, if I press Control, Shift and the Up button, it will bring it to the front. If I press Control, Shift and the Down button, it will send it to the back. Now, of course, I don't want it at the back. I want it to be in the front but I want these two buttons to be in the front. So the trick here is this, and I'll keep this button covered, uh, colored so that you can see what I'm doing, is first of all, uh, with this large button selected, press Control Shift Up Arrow, bring it to the front. Then highlight the area where your option buttons are, and I haven't quite got those, let me, actually this might not work unless I set this as transparent, so you know the button is there. Um, so, if I select the right hand half there, you can see that those two buttons have been selected, but the whole area has been as well. So basically all three buttons have been selected. So I'll show you that again. These two aren't selected, this blue button is. If I drag across just enough to highlight those two. It selects those two, but it also selects the large button. So what I then have to do is hold down the control button and then click the large button to deselect it. Now I've just got these two buttons selected. I can use that layering shortcut, control, shift, and the up arrow to bring them to the front. And if I was to select this large button and color it, you'll see that those two buttons are now uh, sent to the front. So that basically is how to order them. Uh, let me just uh, set this back as it was. Uh, if you have got it at this point, then fantastic. Uh, please do leave a like, uh, share this video, and don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. Um, but for those of you who might just want one quick demonstration of how this works, uh, what I'm going to do now is select these last three slides, duplicate them, and make another question from scratch, demonstrating what I've just shown you. So if you don't need to see this bit, then thank you very very much indeed for watching and don't forget to hit like and subscribe before you go uh, but if you would like just a little more help then uh, here we go so what I've selected is the last three slides with question correct and wrong uh, so I'm going to press Control D to duplicate those slides or you could just press Control C Control V but I've done half the work um, and then this is now my question four now I can't click on this um, little bit here because the large button is in front. So what I'm going to do with the large button selected is press Control, Shift and the down arrow to send it to the back. Now I can click on this text box and change this to question 4. 
um, and I'll ask a question in here. Um, is my name Justin? Oh, and I've got caps lock on. How fantastic. <laughs> is my name Justin? There we are. And uh, let's just center align that again. There we go. Um, and I can now obviously decide which option I want as yes or no. Um, we'll keep yes as the correct option since my name is Justin. So once I've done that, uh, I can now click on the large button at the back, the, the sort of hidden button, and press Control Shift and the up arrow to bring it to the front. Now, of course, at this point, with that in front, I won't be able to click on anything. Even these buttons will be hidden. So I then have to drag my mouse across the right-hand side to select both of these two buttons and also the large button. I now hold the control button down and click this shape at the back to deselect it. So I now just have my option buttons selected and I want to bring them to the front now in front of that large button that covers the whole slide. So I press control, shift and up to bring them up the pile to the front um, and that should be that. So if I click on this large button at the back and I just color it, we should see, yes, my two buttons are in front of it, but it's in front of everything else. Okay, great. Uh, now we need to check on the links, of course, to make sure that they link correctly. So if I, um, if, if my name Justin, yes. So I want the yes button to link to the next slide, which is slide 12, because that's the one that says correct. Um, that is in fact already linking there because it assumes that I'm linking to the next slide. Um, on the previous question, it was linking to whatever the next slide was, so it's just updated that. Um, and I assume that my no button is going to link to the same one, so it's linking to slide 13, which is the wrong slide, but the right option in this choice. Um, and that's it. That's all I need to do. Um, now, on the correct slide, uh, this one, of course, would link to the next question. There isn't a next question, so I'm not going to worry about that for the moment. But let's do the wrong one, because the wrong button, that should link back to, in this case, slide 11, which is question 4. And it is. Um, so once we've got these sets of three slides copied and pasted, um, it does sort of intelligently guess which slide you're probably going to want to link to. Um, but we can easily change that by clicking on change, removing that, choosing slide in this presentation, um, and it's slide 11 that we're wanting to link to because we want to send the user back to slide 11 if they got the question wrong so they can have another go at it. So if I now present this um, from this question, so here it is, is my name Justin? And again, you'll see that wherever I click on this slide, it doesn't send me on to the next slide. I have to click on these buttons here. Let me click on no, which is the wrong answer. And so it tells me wrong. Again, clicking anywhere on this slide does not do anything. I have to click the back button. I click on back have another go at this question, let's say yes, and there we are, I've got it correct, I'm a genius. Um, so I hope that um, that did help. Um, again, if you've got any more questions or suggestions, uh, please do leave them in the comments section. I do read all comments, and I try to reply to all comments as well. Um, so if you have any questions or comments, please do leave them. If you found this uh, video useful, uh, I would appreciate a like. It does make a huge difference to the channel. And if you haven't subscribed already, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Uh, then you'll be first to know of all the new tips, tricks, and techniques which I'll be sharing. So thank you very much indeed uh, for watching. Uh, if you made it this far, then well done, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.